welcome, 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 welcome to another edition of All Ball Chicago. I am your co-host, Robert Bobby Reed, and I got the legend, the NBA veteran, the McDonald's All-American, your host in the building. What's up, Marcus? How you doing? Good, good, good. And we Go got ahead. a special guest up in here, man. I got to give her an introduction, man. She's uh-huh. no stranger to winning. <laughs> Four city championships with the Whitney Young, with Whitney Young, and then a state title to go undefeated with that in 2012. Yeah, going to college, uh, for went to Kentucky, uh, Ohio State, then American. She played for the USA team, won multiple championships with the USA team, and then went on to the pros. Man, give it up, man, for Lene Harper. Man, Chicago's very young. What's up, baby girl? What's up? How y'all doing? Man, we just chilling, man. Glad to have you on here, legend. Liz, she the gave you that work, Liz. <laughs> hold on, hold on, real deal. <laughs> but my my tech guys are uh, getting this tech together. I'm doing it all over here, Nate. I got to make sure I get you in, right? You got to get it all together. I feel it. Yeah. So so hold on for one second, but Bob, you go ahead and keep it going, man. Well, so welcome to the show, Lene, man. You know, uh, I'm just, I'm very impressed with your record and everything that you was able to accomplish. And, and Whitney Young, I mean, who, who who started it off for you? Where did it all come from? Who put the ball in your hand? Man, you know, honestly, when I was younger, my mom was like, hey, I want you to be a dancer. Well, look who it is on the screen at the bottom. <laughs> What's up, coach? <laughs> We had a surprise for you. I had to bring that you on your surprise. It is a surprise. <laughs> What's up, Coach? Hey, how you doing? Good. good. What's up, Coach Irvin? How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing just great. Proud to meet you. I heard a lot about you. I hope it's good. Oh, it's always good coming from that family, man. The basketball family, come on. <laughs> So now let's rewind it and go back. And now, because I know Corey's not going to be with us that you know, too long. She just wanted to chime in and talk to you a little bit. But I, we wanted to hear some stories Uh-oh. first about Nene. You know, some, tell us some stories, Corey. I know you got some stories about it. I've got a lot of stories about Nene. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, though, I was trying to remember the first time I, I met her. I mean, what grade were you in? Like sixth grade, maybe? I was in sixth grade and I was so terrified. I'm like, this is the best <laughs> high school coach and I'm nervous. <laughs> she she well, came she came up to the school with her mom. Uh-huh. She was dressed all cute. <laughs> 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 she didn't look nothing like a basketball player and I hadn't heard of her. So I was like, oh yeah, right, she can play. And her uh-huh. mom was like, no, trust me, she can play. E.C. Hill says she can play. And I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I have to see it for myself. <laughs> wow. That's true. That's wow. really true. So, yeah. so, so Nene was telling us, we didn't know uh, that you guys won four together, four city championships. Mm-hmm. Yep. We we didn't know that me and Rob we didn't do our homework I guess I, I did my homework Liz. okay you did your homework all right <laughs> that is hard to do talk a little bit about that Corey like how can you for one get your, your players to buy into you know your system and what you're all about and what, how you're trying to build that with the young program when you have a young lady like Nene coming in how you get them to buy into what you're trying to do. Well, Nene won four city and and I think every every type of state, right? First, second, third, and fourth. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, and she came in. She started from the the minute she came in, actually, and didn't didn't really have a position, but um, just from the just from even before she started high school, I knew she would be willing to do whatever it took to win. So we put her. She was really a post as a freshman, just so she could be on the court to start the games off. <laughs> Cause I had three, three upperclassmen guards. I think I have four. Well, it was a lot her freshman year, but she rebounded better and she was just so tough. We just, I just had to find a spot to get her on the court. It's just, she started off her career starting out of position, but not really out of position. Cause she's just kind of one of those players that needs to be on the court. Wow. So it's whatever position you need, she could kind of play. We wow, had that's... three, four wow. top guards. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. She really didn't have to run the point 
her entire until her senior year. Now that I think about it. Wow. Yeah. That was, wow. That's that's yeah. interesting. That's very interesting. That 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 shows that you are a ball player. You know, because yeah. you can you can play just about any position that coaches coach put you out there on. Now, Coach, that, I know before you get out of here, we got to talk about Whitney Young a little bit. You mm-hmm. left Whitney Young. Now, is yeah. Whitney Young still going to be talked about as the program, or is Marshall going to be? I I, I hope I hope it ain't going to be Marshall. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, so, I I think so. I mean, I think you know, there's still a lot of tradition and stuff there, and a lot of like Nene's group and stuff, they still go around the program and, and still help with the players. They help with the AU and, and go back to the school and help when they can. So I think it'll, I mean, it's going to look different, but I, I think it'll still be, you know, and talked about. Okay. All right. Corey, hey, what about that? What about that undefeated season they had though, Liv? Well, we're gonna yeah. we're gonna we we, we gonna let Nene talk about that. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, okay. I just wanted to get we're gonna get Corey back on so she can talk about you know what she's doing now at St. Xavier and all that good stuff, man. Because and, and congratulations on uh being coach of the year too. All right, thank That's you. amazing. Congratulations you know, on so that. we'll get we'll get her back on and then we might have Nene come on and surprise her. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be a surprise, Liz. <laughs> no. Dude, I said that. I said that for a reason. I got to to somebody else. You always messing up, son, dude. All right, Corey. It's good to see you. Uh, All right. Bye. Bye, Nene. All right. Take care. Yeah. That definitely was a surprise. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I I wanted to get Corey on to talk a little bit about you. And I got a story, too, that I heard about you, too. And it Uh it was with the fire. It was when you was playing with the fire. And and they was telling me that you was kind of slacking a little bit out there on the court, and and Mac got on you. Mac was like, "Come on, Nene, you're not you're not you're not you're not playing like yourself." Mm-hmm. And they said <laughs> it's like a light switch went on on you, and you just went to work like buckets after buckets. And you looked at him and said, "Now is that enough for you?" <laughs> Ooh, you know what? I- I do remember that. I, rem- I can't remember exactly where we were playing, uh-huh. but I think it was like the first half. I don't know. I was just out of it. I was just, you know, cruising and Matt got on me. He didn't care if the gym was filled to the top. Yeah. We we're going to hear his voice. And I don't know what happened. I just was like, all right, I got to get it together. So that's very true. Yeah. He, he, he sure shared that with me. He said, man, make sure you say this, you know, about Nene because, uh, she had all the talent in the world, man. But sometimes I had to get on her, man, and 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 push her to to be, you know, the player she was. But I was like, "Give me a story." And then he I gave me that story. That too is like, you know, back then when I was growing up, and I'm sure it might have been the same for you guys. But coaches getting on us, you know, screaming, yelling, you know, we didn't take it the wrong way because I knew Corey had her best interest at heart for me. I knew Mac really cared about me. You know, they can get on me and yell at me, but after the game, nay, you good. You know, nay, you need anything, you need a ride, whatever it was. So I didn't take it to heart. You know, now the game is a little different. You know, Mm -hmm. you don't know if you can say certain things, if you can be a strict coach because the culture of the game is so different. And I think that's why I always believe that Chicago was the mecca of basketball because we were just so tough. You know, we just brought that toughness, you know, so definitely uh, I appreciate them. And they really, you know, uh, helped me become the player that I am today. And your question that you asked me, how did I start playing basketball? I don't know. My mom wanted me to be a dancer. And I'm like, I tried it. Ballet, tap, jazz, all of that. And I'm just like, no, I want to play basketball. She's like, no, you're not going to play basketball. I want you to be like me. And when I started playing, um, I was just watching the guys at Avalon Park outside just play. And I just found my way. And as I started to learn the game, you know, people along the way would come and then they'll see me and, you know, help me out. And then that's when I started getting on teams and getting the right coaching. But when I first started playing basketball, I had, you know, there was no one that put a ball in my hand and said, hey, we're going to teach you how to play basketball. Wow. 
And a lot of people don't know that I started shooting with my right hand. I was never always a left-handed player, but I'm like, why am I missing so many shots? I'm like, maybe this isn't the right way to shoot. So I'm like, let me switch to my other hand. Wow. <laughs> I mean, How I still you did that? To today, but you know, that was my mindset. How, how old were you when you did that? Oh, I was young. I was like young, little. Had wow. to be maybe five or six. Wait, 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 wait. Five or six. And you thinking like that already, like my yeah. shot is not going in. So let me switch hands. <laughs> Once I got to like seven or eight at that point, that's like second or third grade. So I'm aware of, you know, what I'm doing. I'm playing basketball every day. I'm not leaving until six or seven at the park. So I'm like, let me just switch hands because uh -huh. I see different guys shooting with, you know, opposite hands. I'm like, let me just try it, you know, and years later, I'm a left-handed basketball player. Wow. <laughs> That's, I ain't never heard no story like that, Liv. Yeah. But he he loving it because he's a lefty. That's yeah. right. Okay. That's right. Yeah. yeah. You don't want no, you don't want that smoke for no lefty. You know yeah. that. <laughs> I, I will say this because I know both of you guys are left. Lefties, it's hard to guard a left hand player. It's yeah. just hard to guard him, man. So you just never so, know. Yeah, so big up. But you know what, Nene? When I watch some of the videos of you when you were playing, you 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 wasn't playing around on with the ball. You know, you were getting to where you needed to get to and making the plays, whether that's getting into the paint and making a pass, getting into the paint, and making the shot, getting at that free throw line, mid-range shot, or three pointer. You wasn't you know, it wasn't a, one of those like flashy type guards that I want to bake you and, and and laugh at you and then and then do something else. You were like, mm -mm, I'm getting to point A to point B and I'm gonna get that before you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, um, I, I, I just I always that's how I train too. I train like that now. I'm not. I've always processed in my mind. I got three to four dribbles max. Mm -hmm. If I can't get to the rim, if I can't create space for my teammates, I gotta pass the ball. You know, you only get 24 seconds shot clock. Right. It's not a lot of time. You know, right. by the time you get down to court, you want to set up a play. You got to get in your position like time is ticking. Right. So if I got if I don't have it in a combo move, I'm a kick and drive. And I, I think the game, you know, it's, it's different now. It's harder. You got legends that's NBA, WNBA, and they got all the moves. And you got Steph Curry shooting 30 feet out. You know, <laughs> kids see that and they want to be like, man, I want to shoot like Steph Curry. I mean, we all want to shoot like that. Right. But that's just a, a gift that he had, you know. Mm -hmm. But you really got to learn the fundamentals of the game. You got to. And if you can do that, if you can pass, if you can dribble effectively, if you can create space, if you can be selfless, if you can rebound and defend, I mean, at some point, a coach is going to need you on the court. You may not be the best offensive player. I've never been the best at everything on every team that I've been on. But I knew that if I played hard, if I locked down on defense and I, I did the right thing at the right time and made hustle plays, somehow, some way, I'm going to end up on the court. You know? Wow, so, Nate. You're right. Nate, 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 I mean, she's hitting everything on – you're hitting everything on point. Like, and But I don't think – most athletes will understand what you're really talking about. And the reason why I say that, because everybody thinks about scoring. This is how I'm going to get on the court. If I score buckets, if I do this, what you just said is what I always tell people. You want to be seen and noticed. Do something that, you know, like a, a defensive play, like a rebound, you know, making your other teammates better. I guarantee you that coach will like you instead of you putting up 50 shots a game. They're going to be like, that's all she can do is shoot. I yeah, mean, show me something else. You know, so. I mean, in high school, I, I think my highest, if I can remember, it was either 36 or 38. I don't think I even missed a shot wow. that game. And I was in high school. I want to say it had to be my senior year. And I mean, so I've had games where I had 30. I've had college games when I've had plus 20. But that doesn't matter if, okay, Lene Harper scored 35 points, but we lost by five. Well, you know, it doesn't matter. Right. It's a team effort, you know? So for me, my last year at Ohio State, for the majority of my season, I, I had, okay, 15 to 17 points, nine to 10 rebounds, you know, three to four or five steals, you know, four or five assists. You know, having that around is like, you know, that's pretty solid, I think. It's pretty solid. <laughs> no question.
<laughs> but I'm not the best. I may not be the best ball handler, or I may not be the best three point shooter, or I, or I may not score all the points, but I can bring you something. I can bring mm-hmm. you a steal. I can get you a, a bucket, maybe a, a rebound, you know, something that's going to help us towards our common goal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's a lot of coaches that, that, that don't see that, don't they, they too? that they will overlook that to try to find that that player that, well, like, I'm just going to say it. I think you got overlooked. I think you got overlooked, you know, many times of having that opportunity to play in the WNBA because they go for the whatever type of player that they think they they want. When you got somebody like yourself, your, your high school coach just admitted that you can play just about any position. So you really positionless. Like, you can go do anything. Mm-hmm. So college, I mean, a uh, WNBA coaches have to see that. They got to know that, that, man, this I can just put her on the court. I'm going to be fine. I'm going to be fine. Because you yeah, just told, so you just tricky. said it. It's so tricky. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is. It is. And I, and, I, and I get it, you know, but at the same time, I think players like you get overlooked a lot. And I'm talking about men and women. Yeah, and, I agree. And, 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 and I, just, I just think that just having you on this show and you talking about, you know, how you worked hard, how your mom wanted you to be a dancer. And you was like, no, I want to play basketball, you know? And then you start watching it and then you picked it up and then you shooting with your right hand when you was like, man, no, I want to shoot with my left. You know, all that stuff plays a part of who you became, you know? And then you had an opportunity, I heard, to play elementary school basketball with Jabari Parker. You and him was on the same team because yep. they didn't have a girls basketball team, I'm assuming, right? Nope. So you had an opportunity to play with him. Uh, how was how was that? Honestly, it was it was cool. You know, like I said back then, growing up, there were no girls basketball teams, no girl camps. You know, so I'm like, man, I could play on a team with Jabari, and it made me that much tougher. Because on the court. They didn't look at me as if I was a girl. They looked at me like you're on the court and we were going to toe to toe. You know, I made Jabari better. He made me better. But it was the relationships and the bonds that we created off the court. Like we're still friends to this day, you know, and to look back, you know, 10 years ago, like, man, we used to play together and we used to battle. You know, it made me tougher and I can translate that to the women's game. And that helps me, uh, separate my game you know a little bit Mm -hmm. and with toughness it's not just physical but it's mental so like you said a lot of players get overlooked and I mean it's tough but you know that's the reality but I think the thin line between making it is is almost as like not giving up it's so quick like when you're seven to eight like man I want to get to the NBA man I want to get to WNBA okay you go to high school you do your thing you go to college and then Drive time comes, you don't hear your name. It's like, well, man, I worked this hard to get here and it doesn't happen. Well, maybe I could just do something else, mm-hmm. you know, or even if you do try it for the first couple of years, it's not working out. A lot of players give up, mm-hmm. you know, and I mean, that's just the reality of it. And it's a hard, it's a tough decision. It's like, do I keep chasing my, my dreams and my goals or do I just let it go and find another passion? Mm-hmm. You know, when I came out 2018, I'm sitting here watching the draft. I could have just been like, you know what? I didn't get drafted. I can just do something else. I could be a coach. Mm -hmm. I could just still be a part of the game. But I'm like, man, I love this game too much. You know, got cut a couple times. But I'm like, nah, I think I still have a chance. Now, if I'm 31 years old and I'm still (laughs) trying, it's it's time for me to let go. But I feel like I still got time. I feel like I still got something to prove. And, you know, what the league is transitioning, you know, all those vets that came out five to 10 years ago, they're transitioning out. So I mm-hmm. feel like I'm in a good time. I'm in a good space right now. Although I'm not there right now, these next three years will be crucial for me, you know, so I got to stay committed to the grind. I, that's why I'm working out two, two, three times a day, you know, so when a call comes through, I don't have to be like, oh man, I got to go to the gym. It's like, all right, I'm ready. Right. You know? And I, and, I, and I want you to help some of our listeners out, too, with this, because I talk about it, but I, it's good to hear from somebody like you, because you got peers that look up to you, people same age, what have you. 
Do you set goals? I do. Yeah. And do you write them down? Like, like I try to tell people to write their goals down and stick it on the wall somewhere so you know exactly, you know, how many shots you did or how many dribble moves you did or, or how many free throws you made. Write it down on the wall and put it on the wall, a piece of paper and put it on the wall so you know every day. Monday, I did this too. Who's the idea that? Do you do that? Of course. And I, I'm still working on it right now, but I'm, I'm doing my first vision board. I've never done one before. Okay. So I'm like, with everything going on in 2020, I'm like, let me make this vision board. I'm going to post it in my room so I can see it every day. But I, for a long time, I had a journal. And I would just write down, you know, my goals, you know, what I wanted to do and uh, to see it manifest. Um, it's a great feeling. Um, and I realized that once you work at something, when you see results, it's very true. I realized that when I was working out with my trainer last uh, summer and we was just drilling, drilling the same drill, you know, and I'm just like, man, why? But then I get overseas and I'm in the game and I'm doing it just effortlessly, not knowing that I was doing it. I'm thinking like, well, man, all that time and effort I put into that move or that drill, it paid off. So right. that's a testament to show that if you keep working at something and you have the right mindset about it and you have a positive attitude, you know, it's going to work out. Like a lot of players, they got the talent, you know, they got the 30 points and the name and all of that, but you got to have a right mindset and a good attitude. I always tell people that regardless of my situation, they can't say, man, they got a terrible attitude, man. Nay does not work hard, man. She's kind of lazy. She's not a team player. Regardless of what my game says, you could say, oh, three point percentage is not there, but you can't say that I don't work hard. Okay. You know, so those are the, those intangibles matter. You got to have it because the team will pick you up and they know that you may not be the best, but man, this kid is just, she's bring good energy. She's a good teammate. She's selfless. She's going to do the things that say others may not want to do. And it pays off in the end. It pays off. Can I, can I ask you a question, Lene? Yeah. Have you, have you heard, uh, and I know Marcus has probably heard this. I've heard that coaches feel like the women fundamental game is better than the guys fundamental game. I've heard that. I've heard that over and over again. I know you don't want to be too biased about it, but I yeah, mean, you- I hear that too. You know what? That's tough to. It's tough to answer that. I don't know because when guys train, I mean, technically they're working on fundamentals. When we train, we're working on fundamentals. I just think that they have the athletic ability to get outside uh, of that. To get outside of that. So right. LeBron, for instance, he can grab a rebound and be down a court like that, <laughs> you know, versus us. That's rare. It's rare that you'll get in transition and be completely wide open and can just, you know. Right. So that's right. where the spacing comes in. You know, you got to be able to, you know, maneuver around traps, you know, breaking down defenses. What? How are you going to react to this, this pick and roll? You know, so we have to be more fundamental, you know. Mm-hmm. In the NBA, you really don't got to react to that because you're big, you're stronger. So I think we are a little bit more fundamental than the guys because we have to naturally, you yeah. know, have to really figure the game out. And I think a part of that is watching film. Yeah. I did not like watching film growing up because I did not want to see myself mess up. And you know, <laughs> when you watch the game and you're like, I know this is when I messed up. You don't want to watch it. Yeah, right. It's a part of the game. You got to. Right. You gotta see where you messed up because when you get in the game and that situation comes again, you'll know how to, you know, handle it. So yeah. I do think the women's game is a little bit more fundamental than the guys. It is. Yeah. I, hey, Lynn, I Lynn. okay, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just I was I gonna say, can we dip over to, to her high school though? The yeah, yeah. city championships real quick. Yeah, man, like, we gonna be like, we gonna be all over the place. Like, cause I always tell Lib, if I was him, I would have had the big head, right? <laughs> okay, so you didn't want four city championships, and then you won a state that was undefeated. How did you maintain not having the big head? Or did you have just a little bit of the big head? No, you know, I never had that. And my mom okay. always told me, she said, it's okay to be a little cocky, just a little bit, okay. when you know that you're good. And I've just never had that. The only time I've had that is, like, in the midst of a game and say, like, 
the opposing team is like talking trash you or know. like opposing coach. Like that's gonna get me fired up because I'm like, <laughs> all right, <laughs> right. I'm trying to be cool, but <laughs> other than that, I've never, you know, I've never been like that. You know, I just that. I get to my business, I do what I got to do, and I, I keep it moving. That's good. And I think that's and I think that's awesome to do that too because a lot of times some people get so caught up in that, you know, trying to show everybody talk talk how great I am and all that stuff. You don't need to do that, you know. Let, it's okay to have a swag though. It's okay yeah, to be him like yeah. I am who I am, but there's no need to like boast. I probably would never do that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you ain't quote like Kevin Durant. I'm Kevin Durant. You the <laughs> Nayar. <Arkham. laughs> right. 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 Yeah, nah. But, but let's talk, like let's talk about let's talk about your mom. You know the family. Let's talk about because we we do this show because we want to try to help people understand how important family could can be. You know, in your basketball career, now we have some parents that really not that much involved, and then you have some parents that's involved, and then you have some parents that go over the top. You yes, know. involved. <laughs> <laughs> So talk a little bit about your family, how, you know, that support system works for, you know, you. Um, it's amazing. Uh, I think it's no better feeling to have like a support system, um, especially your family, your mom, just being there every step of the way. I mean, it's, it just makes everything that much better. Like even in college, me and my teammates, we're warming up and I'm like, you see my mom in the stands? And they're like, do you see my mom? And it's like, we shouldn't even be thinking about that. <laughs> but it's a good feeling to know like your, your family is there to support you. Like they want to see you win. You know, I've been around players who didn't have that and I know that it had an effect on them. Mm -hmm. So for me, you know, it was a huge part. And like my mom, it went from I don't want you to play basketball to she's my biggest fan and she gets on me all the time. Your wrist was not like this when you shot that free throw. <laughs> you turn to the left and you got to do this, this, and this. But, um, and I'll listen. But, but that's the same, but that's the same mom that said she wanted you to dance. The same mom. <laughs> same Shout mom. out to mama. Shout <laughs> out. <laughs> but yeah, she supports me and um, she wants me to be better. You know, she's always on me. Did you go to the gym today? You know, you got to get your shots up. But she was never the type of mom to just take the morale out of the situation. Just like down in me for every situation, every mistake. Like, because at the end of the day, we're young. You know, when mm -hmm. you're in high school and grade school, it's okay to just let it be fun. You know, mm -hmm. they may not like the sport. I don't know if I want to play basketball in high school. Maybe this is something that I like now. But if you put too much pressure on your kid, as they get older, they might resent the, the sport. They may not want to play the sport. And then that kid may feel like, well, man, if I don't play the sport, then I'm not going to, you know, make my family happy. And that just creates a situation that's not really healthy. So I'm very grateful that she allowed me to do what makes me happy. And that was basketball. And I didn't realize I was good until my junior year. She probably knew that I was good, but I didn't know. I'm like, man, am I really, like, am I okay? Despite the city championships, my freshman and sophomore year, I'm like, I don't know if I'm really that good until I got my first USA invite. And I'm like, oh man, I must be okay because, right. <laughs> right. you know, I got an invite, so. No, no, nay, nay, now let's talk about that. Cause you're not gonna just let that just slide. <laughs> like that's the USA, you know, that's the top, the top, you know, it don't get no bigger than that, right? So yeah. how many kids, how many females were actually chosen to even come to the tryouts? Oh, my very first year when I was 16, I could be wrong with the number, but I'm pretty sure it was at least 150 or more. Wow. wow. I mean, and, you, it was and you made it. And I made it out of a 12 rock, 12 man roster. And I was just like, I gotta be something because yeah. it's hard, you know, and you get there and it's like, you got all these girls from everywhere and they're letting players go day by day. I mean, the camp is like maybe a weekend and I'm, my mind is everywhere. Like you're thinking to yourself, oh man, I just turned the ball over. They about to let me go. You know, you're just thinking the worst, but it's just like, 
everywhere I go, I try to find something that I'm good at and just focus on that thing. I never go into any kind of like try out trying to outscore anybody because everybody's going to want to do that. Like, man, I'm, I'm about to go to this tryout. I'm about to score 50. No, that's not a guarantee that because every team needs a score, a rebounder, a defender, an energy player, a playmaker. You need all of that. You know, so if I know I'm at a tryout with some of the top players, top scores, Mm -hmm. I'm gonna make sure that I do all the dirty work as well as score as well as defend you know I'm a rebound I'm gonna be tough I'm gonna compete you know I'm gonna be vocal a lot of players don't know how important it is to be vocal you got to talk you know you can't be quiet you know you got to be selfless so that's what I did and then as years went on um, I was grateful enough to get invited again and then just blessed enough to, to to make the team you know you did that like three, four times though, right? You were yeah. world champ three times, right? Three, four times. Yeah. Got a couple gold medals, yeah. Yeah, she got three gold medals, man. Come on, Nene. You got to start <laughs> talking about that, you know. <laughs> now, now, Bob, you talking about, I would be bragging on that. Like, yeah, yeah gold medals, USA basketball, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You'll be bragging later. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I got, nah, yeah. But, yeah um, because people put that on a big scale. That's like bigger than national titles and stuff like that right Liv? yeah i mean you got that gold man gold medal and i realized that it was really big i, I think it was 20 i forgot what year it was we did pan american okay and we had like a full opening ceremony with all the countries we were in canada and that's when i realized i'm like yo this is the real deal like I'm playing alongside the best players in the country. I got Brianna Stewart, you know, I'm Whoa. Kelsey Plums and, you know, Mariah Jefferson. I mean, I'm there with those caliber players and to be there and, you know, to even get silver. I mean, it's that, I mean, that's just the life. It was wow. a dream come true, you know, so. That's huge. Yeah. And you from Chicago. And I'm from Chicago. That's right. South side. Right, baby. south side, South Side, South Side. That's what I'm talking about. That's what's up. There you go with that South Side, West Side. <laughs> we just love it, man. We it's just fun, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but but then you go now. Is you know you we, we talked a little bit about the high school. We talked about you know the Olympics, and now that's uh, your decision making. I mean, uh, the decision to go to college because you was a McDonald All American. And you could have probably went to a lot of other schools and you chose Kentucky. What was the thought process in you choosing Kentucky? Um, and you're right. I literally, I, I could have went to any school. Um, for me, we didn't know much back then. I mean, I'm in high school. I'm just coming off a state championship and these letters are just coming in. I mean, it was one tournament and we had about 50 coaches lined up, you know, so it's hard back then. You don't know, you don't know, you don't have any real knowledge about the schools, the coaches, you know, so in my mom's perspective, it's like, okay, I'll make sure that the academic side is good. Because we want you to graduate. It's not like the NBA where you're one and done. So her mind is like, let's make sure you get the best education, the degree possible that you can get. And so with me and along with, you know, Coach Corey and, you know, other people that was close to me, we tried to find the best school. Um, So now that I'm thinking back on it, for example, like UCLA, right? I really enjoy UCLA. Like I was so stuck on the campus. I mean, it's LA. That's Cali. That's the life. That's Cali. <laughs> back then, people may not know that the travel, it wasn't like they're coming to play DePaul. You know, me being four hours away from home, I can't see my family. There wasn't a, what is that, Pac-12? Right. I think. Mm-hmm. There wasn't a Pac-12 network where you can watch the games, you know, or so things are different how it is now than back then, you know, so that played a part. Um, and I didn't want to go too far away. I wanted to kind of stay somewhere in between. So I took my visits and man, I went to Kentucky and a visit just felt right. 
from the team to the atmosphere, the education, like, as well as one of my closest friends, Janae Thompson, she was a year uh, ahead of me, but she committed to Kentucky. So she was already there. So okay. that helped the process even more. Um, and I mean, it's Kentucky, you know, right. like, it's Kentucky basketball. So I went there and I mean, it was overall, it was, it was a decent experience. Um, my teammates, I mean, it's very rare that you will play on a team with 14 other girls and there's literally no drama. Wow. We That's were good. That's good. family, a family. And if we had situations, it wasn't anything serious. So that's rare along right. with like the education part. I mean, they treated us so nice. I mean, so nice. The gear. I know those facilities was top tier, right? Yeah, facilities. <laughs> how we flew, I mean, the gear, how we live, I mean, it was top notch. But, you know, it's 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 always two sides to every story. You know, you get there and that's their job to sell you. And then once you come, some it's a hit or miss. Either yeah. it's going to be the fit or it's not. You know, it didn't work out. And I could have stayed, but I'm like, I need to do, you know, what's best for me. Around the time that I transferred, it was tricky you know a lot of teams already had 15 players and it was mid-season so um I liked Ohio State uh, the alumni was huge you know that's always big for you know graduating um and the coaches were always just genuine like they were always there even when I was younger before I got to um I even got to college yeah so it's just like I just loved it there and then Stephanie, Stephanie Mavunga, who was there as my teammate, she just transferred from UNC. Sierra Calhoun, she transferred from Duke. Wow. Sierra, my chance transferred from Duke. So we was trying to form this... Super team. Our, super team. <laughs> <laughs> and we had Kelsey Mitchell, too. So that's where we were trying to go with that. Um, but the recruiting process is hard. You know, uh, all I can say is, is you got to find the right people to be in your circle and you got to really do research. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter, you know, oh, this team won this amount of games, this amount of championships. It's really about just finding the right fit for you. Now, granted, if you go to, you know, a Notre Dame or UConn, your chances of, you know, making it to the next level obviously are higher, you know, the, the track record. Um, but it's just about finding the right team for you. Did, did Gino come holler at you, though? I had a couple conversations with Gino. I sure did. I love Gino. He's amazing. Um, I had a chance to even chat with him when we did Pan American, and I just love his energy. He's so dope. Wow. wow. He, he, he the <laughs> yeah, He's like the GOAT, right? He's like the GOAT of college. He's the GOAT. Yeah, he's, he's the GOAT. He, he's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, now, so, so now you had to make that decision on when you left Kentucky, what, what school you was going to attend, and you said, it's hard, you know, it's hard to, to put your name in that transfer portal and then have all these schools reaching back out to you again, being recruited all over again. And then you had to make that decision on like, man, you know, Ohio State, Big Ten. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a tough physical conference. Um, is this the right fit for me? Then, then me going to, you know, that Pac-12 again, going back West, because, you know, West, West Coast basketball to me is different than the Midwest you know, basketball. So what what played a part in you, you know, choosing Ohio State? Um, I think it was just the coaches, you know, after you're in college and you, you see how it's like, you know, being an athlete. Um, for me, it's more so about the relationships that you build. And the coaching staff from Ohio State is, I mean, amazing. I mean, from if you ever need anything, like they're there. You know, no program is perfect, but anything that I needed, they were there. You know, um, if I was down or if I just wasn't having a good week or, you know, they were just always there. I could text a coach and they'll get back to me. It didn't feel like a coach player relationship. It felt like family. And I really, you know, enjoyed that. Granted, I think the SEC is the best conference to play in. It's tough. Yeah. It's quick. You know, all of that. Big Ten is not as quick, um, but it's still a tough conference. Right. So with for me, with my game. I don't think it was a matter of what type of conference, because I feel like I can play in any style. I just have to adjust to it, you know, whether if it's fast, slow, you know, fast paced, just bringing the ball down, zone, press. 
I can adjust is just just it being the right fit, you know. And we won two. Um, we went back to back Big Ten champs, you oh, know. Yeah. Hey, so okay. it, it turned out well. Um, I think, um, and I got a lot of feedback uh, from the year I came out. Uh, the feedback was, "Oh, we don't know if she's a point guard," you know, because once you get to the league, it's your height. I'm five eight. That's kind of short to play the two. And my last year, I was starting at the four for Ohio State. I was guard, we went four guards and a post, but I was guarding the four. I was guarding the four players. So I can understand why there would be, you know, red flags, like can she play, you know, the guard position? Although I know that I can, you know, maybe they didn't feel comfortable enough. So now I've just been working on solidifying my position as a guard, as a point guard, you know, and making coaches feel comfortable, you know, with my game, knowing that I can play the one, the two, you know, regardless of my height. You know, but 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 Nate, 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 who is whose uh, job is that to help promote you, like as that position? You know, that player. You know, is that your job? Is that high school coach job? Is that the college coach when you get to the college? Is the college you know job to say, no, she's a point. I just need her over here now for now. You know. So it, 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 you see what I'm saying? Like it kind of, it, it kind of hurts you a little bit because you didn't actually play your natural position. Mm -hmm. uh, so the coach was like, I need her on, on the court <laughs> so I can win these games. But at the same time, it was kind of hurting you for that next level. You get what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. I think it, it helped me as far as like my game and film, but I think it hurt me as far as the next, you know, level, like you said, because coaches are looking, I think, but, one thing I've realized, I think at the end of the day, when it comes to the pro level, it doesn't even matter. I think coaches are only going to want who they want, mm -hmm. you know, and that's just business. And that's, that's corporate, that's NBA. A coach is going to want you if they want you, you know, if they don't want you, they don't want you. It doesn't even matter if they can clearly see, you know, that you can do X, Y, and Z, but it's all about that coach giving you a chance. You know, a coach believing in you. And it's a lot of, um, and I feel like a lot of athletes deal with this. You yeah. know, you get to a school and some coaches just just take your confidence away. Mm -hmm. You know, like they just suck the life out of you. And you're like, man, do I want to play basketball? And, you know, that's why I'm like, maybe I need to transfer because I don't want to lose the love for a game. But I'm like, I don't know what to do. So, like, Corey, she's believed in me she saw something in me and that just shoots your confidence right out the door because you're like if you're out there you're playing and you don't think your coach believes in you you know it's kind of hard to play and it's harder to win when you got a coach who believes in you you got teammates who believe in you when it come down to those games where it's possession by possession we're gonna battle because we know that we we love each other and we got each other's back but it's a little harder when you don't have that feeling. So I think it goes hand in hand, you know, having that coach promote you like, nah, man, this, this kid, she's playing the three and the four right now, but she can play the one versus, you know, a coach giving you a chance. But in between that, it goes back to just having the right attitude, character, anything, because that same co coach will call the college coach back mm -hmm. in the league and say, Hey, how's this kid? Who mm -hmm. want to bring to camp? Well, her attitude is good. You know, she works hard. She can play the one. But if you just give her a chance, you'll be able to see it. Right. If, you know, your attitude isn't where it should be and you're not in the gym how you should be, then it's kind of like, well, you know, it's a risk. So I try to make sure that I'm pretty well-rounded in all areas so that I don't just miss a chance because of my attitude or my work ethic, you know? Mm-hmm. But but it's a lot of coaches out there. I mean, we just talking and we having fun too. But this I think this is a good program. This is a good episode right here. But it's a lot of coaches that will that will try to tear you down, right? And never ever think about bringing you back up, like bringing you back up, motivating you, like you just said. I always thought that coaches' jobs were to motivate, to be mentors to our young, uh, up and coming athletes. So if I got if I'm coaching. Let's say if I, I'm coaching, Nene, you come in, I'm coaching you. My first thing is I'm going to do is try to motivate you. 
to get you to play as hard as you possibly can play, right? I'm not going to say, I can't stand to her. I mean, I'm going to try to run her off the gym. I'm going to try to run off the team. It's a lot of coaches that do that. And I, it makes me so upset when I see coaches do that because you can make a young lady or young man quit the game and never want to play it again. They will lose the love of the game. So I say that to say, coaches, don't tear these kids down. Build them up. I don't care what you have to do. And it's not about the wins and losses right now. It's about changing some young men or woman who comes into your gym, your school, to make them become somebody one day. And you can be hard on them. I'm not saying don't be hard and tough on them. But don't tear them down and, and, and just think that they're garbage. I think it's about, I think it goes back to just being selfless and knowing like the true purpose. Like, and this make this makes me think about, you know, the last dance, right? Mm -hmm. Jerry Krause. You know, you wanted to just break that team up so bad, you know, because they were winning and he wasn't in the spotlight anymore. And I think, and I could be wrong, but I think a lot of coaches wants to be in that spotlight or say, man, we won because of me, or I want to take the credit. But all in all, everyone deserves the credit. You got the coach, you got the assistant coaches, you got the managers, you got the dobos, the people that's, you know, getting our meals, getting our flights, scheduling our practices. You got the players, you got the trainers. If you got chefs, I think it's a team thing. It's not just one person, but all in all, at the end of the day, it's five players on the court. And those five players is a reflection of that program and that university or that pro team. So it's a, it's a joint effort. It's not a, oh, I'm the coach and we won because I made this certain play call. No, it's you grind together. It's, it's a marathon mm -hmm. and it's not a one man show. Mike couldn't win without Pippen. He couldn't win without Rodman. And if you look at Phil, the way he handled each player, you know, mm -hmm. Dennis, man, I need a vacation. I need to go to Vegas. Was it probably the right decision to make? No. Most coaches nowadays would be like, no, you can't go to your own line run. But Phil understood his players. He had an individual relationship with every player and he knew how to handle every player. And mm -hmm. I think coaches should do a better job with that. Knowing, man, I can't yell at so-and-so or get on this player like I can with this other player. You have to know how to deal with other players, but that goes back to just forming relationships. A lot of colleges, when you get on campus, it's just you on campus and y'all a team, you know? And that's why I really appreciate like some of my coaches at Kentucky and even at Ohio State, like our coaches would spend time with us. You know, if we're on the road, they're just not all in their phone or doing whatever. They spend time with us and it's needed. You know, you don't want to feel like you're always under pressure or everything is just business. You want to feel like home. Right. Because your college is home away from home. Your parents are sending you away to a university for four years and you want to have a good experience. So I think coaches really got to, you know, take a step back and really understand that it's about the players you know because most coaches they had their shot to play mm -hmm. and it goes for, same for me once I'm done playing and say if I want to get into coaching my time is up to play so it's my my duty to give back to the younger generation because I can't play anymore this is the next generation so I have to do everything in my power to help them get to the level of basketball that they want to achieve so let me hop in real quick, I, I, saw, I heard her talking about the last dance. You are pretty young. You didn't see Michael. I didn't. I was born in 95. <laughs> so, yeah, that was like, so that, that last dance really helped you mentally with the whole game, seeing Mike and all of that? Yeah, it helped me a lot because me being 25, I was born in 95, and that's when they were transitioning literally. Right. You know, their last few years. And now my era is like, oh, man you know, the MJ, Kobe, LeBron comparison, right? Mm -hmm. and I now understand why there is a comparison. Should there be a comparison? No. 
But I understand why, because my MJ is LeBron. That's who right. I was watching. You know, somebody in Kobe's era, their MJ, their MJ was Kobe. Right. For others, their MJ was MJ. So yeah. I understand why it's a debate you know, or comparison, but I mean, we know the greatest of all time. I'm a diehard LeBron fan. I will argue somebody all day and all night about LeBron. <laughs> he will too, he will too. I will too. <laughs> my dog. He's one of a kind. Yeah. He's one of a kind, you know? So me watching that, I, I learned a lot, you know? What did you get from Mike though? What did you think about Mike though? Man, his mind was basketball, and winning only. That yeah, was sick. And he was gonna do whatever he could <laughs> to make sure he won. You know, whatever. Okay. You, know, you gotta respect it. Yeah. You no, know, you got to. And that's yeah, why he's one of the greatest. Yeah, that was Mike. Yeah. So now now it's time, you know, for you to, you know, do your uh professional, you know, career it's, it's kicking off. And um you went overseas. Did you go overseas first? Uh, or did you do the tryouts and made the team with the WNBA? Yeah, okay. I did get the tryouts. Um, and that was crazy, too, because I was watching a draft. And, you know, they have, like, the the next available. And I see my name up there. And I'm like, well, hopefully. <laughs> 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 but fast forward, and I didn't get drafted. And I was like, and I rarely cried. Shed a few tears. Right after that, I got three calls. Okay. And I chose Chicago. And um, I was kind of grateful to be a free agent because I was able to pick where I wanted to go, mm-hmm. you know, versus say I got drafted by, I don't know, for example, outdoor team out, New York. Right. And I see their roster and I know for a fact I'm not going to make the team. Right. And I think players, as they get older, need to be realistic. Mm-hmm. And I'm learning that now. It's like, oh man, I'm good. No, you got to be realistic. And just mm-hmm. understand that it's going to be hard for me to make this team, but I'm going to give it a shot. So mm-hmm. me looking at the rosters, I said, man, if I go to Chicago, I think I got a solid shot to make the team. I said, I'm going to just give them my all, you know, and that's what I did. So I went there, played there for a year, and I went overseas. I went to Israel, came back, re-signed with the Sky. And then this last fall, I was playing um, in Latvia, EuroLeague which is a good experience too. So right. yeah, good experience. Wow. That's what's up. No, that's, that's awesome. Um, in the that's, meantime, I'm going to say this the last thing. Okay. Um, as a pro, you realize that it's really, you know, it's up in the air at any given moment. You can be signed, you can get a call, but in the meantime, when you're not playing, you know, what are you doing to solidify your position where you're at? I think a lot of athletes, you know, get caught up in, man, I got to chase my dreams. I got to be this professional athlete. And you got to, you kind of forget about the other things. And so that's why I formed a team and I got my not-for-profit and I'm trying to give back to my community and set things up for me. So as I'm playing, I can still make a difference in the city. You know, and it's 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 very hard running a non for profit. You know, it's hard getting grants. It's hard, you know, you know, getting the support. But I'm only a year in, so and I know down the line, you know, it's going to be great. But so I started my non for profit, and each year we do a back to school giveaway to the CPS schools and um, trying to have camps and you know leagues for young girls and you know a few other initiatives. But I think it's important that you have a balance, you know, because I want to be remembered on the court and off the court. Wow. And I want whatever I have going on off the court, you know, to continue, you know, for years and years ahead. That's real. That's yep. real. That's real. So I you probably, just, I got somebody I could probably plug you with too, if you need some help finding funds and stuff. I, no, got I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Cause it's, it's hard, you know? Well, you, I mean, you're on All Ball Chicago, too, promoting it right now, too. So you yeah. might get some people. So you can might you might want to share that right now with some of our listeners. Yeah, yeah definitely. Name, uh, in September. So every September, I'll go to – I'll get the team together, and we'll pick five to seven elementary schools. And somebody asked me, well, Nate, why don't you just have an event? Have the event, have the supplies and everything there, and have the kids come. I'm like, well, a lot of kids can't get there. A lot of kids don't have the support. They don't have the transportation. 
So we go to the schools. Right. We give them book bags filled with supplies. We talk to the kids, try to do giveaways, and we meet them where they're at. Wow. You know? So um, this year, I'm hoping I can, you know, get enough to maybe bless seven or eight CPS schools and be able to go out to each school and talk to the kids hands on with them. So that's the next thing I'm working on. Man, and, 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 you, and you need one of those shoe companies to jump on board and support you too, whether that's a Nike or Adidas. They 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 make so much money off our, off these athletes, man. It, it, it's only right because that's where most of their money is being spent anyway. All of our kids want to wear the, the shoes and all that. They should be jumping on board with you on this and saying, you know what, and they – you from Chicago. Chicago is one of the high crime, you know, areas. Let's let's put all our energy and help you be successful and giving back to your community, uh, because we all know we need it. Chicago is in, in need, you know, for for a lot of help. And I'm I'm happy that you are doing this, you know, at a young age. I wish I would have been doing it at a young age when I was young and saying, you know what. I'm from Chicago. I'm all about Chicago. I want to give back to Chicago, but I didn't have nobody like, like your mom. You got, your mom is basically the one that's helping you, you know, guide you through a lot of things and, and prepared you for that moment for what you're doing right now. So anyway, we can try to help promote that, you know, we'll, we'll continue to share it until, you know, it comes to the time when you're doing it, you know, back she to say the name of it, Liv? So it's my nonprofit is called THK. It's that Harper kid. That Harper and kid. I got that, that name Harper from Rahm Emanuel. Oh. And I was, he came to Winnie Young one year and he came to me, he said, are you that Harper kid? And I'm like, yeah. And after that, it seems like everywhere I go, somebody's like, are you that Harper kid? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. So the name just kind of stuck with me. And I, when making my forming my non-for-profit I'm just like man I'm that Harper kid but for the younger generations they can be that kid that makes it to the league they can be that kid to be that next NBA coach or that next WNBA coach you know and so that's the name of you know non-for-profit that Harper kid so have you, have you teamed up with uh the legends yet in Chicago I have not no I need to get you in tune with them. So you got, I think you could get in there now and be part of that. And they always doing things in the community. I know that. So I know they would probably jump on board with you. So I'll get you in tune with them as oh, well. Great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because uh, you're doing a lot of great things. And, uh, and I know Bob likes to do things in the community. I like to do things in the community. Bob been doing stuff in his neighborhood for how many years, Bob? Man, it's 15, 20 years, man. The wild wow. hunters, man. Roseland, you know? That's my area. That's my area. That's amazing, though. You said Ron, Ron Emanuel. We like to circle back on him. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. I mean, he did a pretty good job in Chicago. I must say, I mean, people don't like him. Mm -hmm. But, dude, when he was here, the crime wasn't this bad, man. No, it wasn't. It wasn't yeah. this was that bad, bad, man. Yeah. yeah. So maybe... The reason maybe. why the crime is like that is because, one, we don't have a lot of mental okay. health institu institutions in the city. You know, we don't have, the park districts aren't the same as when I was growing up. You know, I can't think of, you know, ongoing camps that's really beneficial for the kids. And that's why I'm trying to carve out the time. You know, COVID is, I mean, it's tough right now. Before, you know, trying to have camps for all girls, you know, mm -hmm. lead for all girls, you know, just trying to create opportunities for them because it's so hard. And, if there is nothing going on or you can't meet the kids halfway, they don't have any hope. A lot of these kids just don't have hope. They don't think that they can be successful, you know? And sad to say, we're telling them, they're looking on TV and we're saying this and they're listening on the radio and we're saying that, but if we're not out there with them, helping them, you know, it doesn't really matter. You know, I've gotten letters from young kids after the back to school, like, thank you so much. I didn't have pens I didn't have paper I didn't have whatever it was and it touched me because I'm like man when I grew up I at least had that mm -hmm. I didn't have a lot but at least I had that so me giving back to these kids it means a lot it means you know what I'm, I'm about to give you the, I'm about to give you this idea and you can run with it right mm -hmm. a, a female woman's pro-am game in Chicago but it's under your umbrella mm -hmm. 
And now these young girls, you invite them to the Pro-Am games. Now they get a chance to touch a Lene. They get to touch a WNBA, another WNBA player. You invite your friends. You invite, you say, I need y'all to come down and do and be supportive of this Pro-Am. And you may do it for only two or three week, weeks mm-hmm. or something like that. But I think that will help young females that want to get involved. Because Michael Jordan is the one, when the Pro-Am was big in Chicago for me, to actually play on the same team in high school with Michael Jordan, it gave me oh, hope. Right. Like you said, it gave me hope. Like, man, I can do mm-hmm. this. I'm playing on the court with him right now, so I know I can do it. So I think if you spearhead something like that, I think you can probably pull it off. And, and, and he gave you his number. That's 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 something right there. He cooking something up. Yeah. Hey, hey, Liv ain't gonna tell you Mike, Michael gave him his number and told him to call him. I, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> he was in high school. What what would you live a senior? Yeah, I was a senior, man. He actually he actually gave me his phone number and I'm like, what am I gonna do with this dude? I'm I, I'm number one player in the country, man. <laughs> <laughs> really though, yeah. shout out to Jordan Brand. Um I had a chance to work with them okay. uh, for All Star Weekend and they are amazing. So I you mean, need to circle back around. You need to circle back. Amazing. I mean, um, those who just are a part of the brand, you know, how they feel about just the brand, family, all of that. I mean, they're just top notch, you know, wow. amazing brand, definitely. Wow. I can't believe it. Michael. It's MJ. Yeah, it is. Number top, is. top, 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 number top choice. Mike. But, but but LeBron is the same way though. Anything LeBron wants, he gets, you know. Yeah. So you know. But before we go, we always do it without, you know, our guests share some knowledge with the young up and coming female, a little girl that wants to learn how to play or get involved in basketball, whatever kind of way they want to do it. Share some of your advice, you know, to that. Uh, I think the biggest advice that I can give um, is probably to not be afraid to take a chance. You know, as a female athlete, it's, it's so much going on. Like, you can't do this. You can't do that. And uh, you may not make it to the league. Like, just give it a shot. And the the biggest thing is to never give up, no matter what. That's the one thing that I live by. Just don't give up. You know, I was reading something today, and it said um, an infant falls, falls down X amount of times a day. And they don't mm-hmm. think about worrying about, am I going to get up? They just keep trying. And so when I saw that, I'm like, man, that's pretty much how I live. As many times as I've heard, no, got to just keep going. You got to just keep trying, never give up. That's all. Awesome. As long as you keep fighting and you, your head is on strong and you're putting in that work ethic, it's going to all line up how it should be. And as I tell myself every day and everybody else, at some point, your turn will come. It's whether or not if you're ready or you're not. So. Yeah. Renee, well, that Harper kid. Yeah, that Harper yeah. kid. That Harper kid. <laughs> that Harper kid. I like wow. that. I do. I like that. Did you brand that? You got you got to brand that. I'm working on it. I'm working yeah. on it. Yeah. Yes. That's awesome. Well, it, again, it was uh awesome to have you on here. Great. Uh, and your mom, you know, used to always tell me tell me about you. I always watch the games. She's like, my baby going to be on. Make sure you tune in. Oh, she's my biggest fan. I love her. So I was always watching the games when it was on television. Yeah. Well, I appreciate so, uh, the support. Yeah, no doubt. Having me on. Yeah, no doubt. And you can come on anytime you want to. I know we know your workout schedule now, so we won't mess with you <laughs> during that time, but. Definitely, we would love love for you to come back on, and 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 maybe it's around the time you you giving back, you know, back to school. Yeah, that'll be great. Yeah, definitely. And uh, uh, backpacks and, and doing things for the inner city kids. Yeah, definitely. That's gonna be All huge, right. man. That's gonna be huge, man. Yeah, keep us in tune with that. I I love to share some information to help out with that, man. Yeah, yeah definitely, definitely need it. Great. And definitely get with Rob. Rob knows, man, this this guy right here, if you tell him you want to do something, he going to make, he going to try his best to make it happen. So make sure you get uh, in contact. Well, I'll work you. I'll, I'll work you. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, definitely. I, I, I just love it, man. It's just amazing, man, especially if African-American female live. 
You know, we don't have a lot of them come on our show. And right. just to, to give the young lady something, man. And it's, I just feel it's great. It's great, bro. It's, yeah. it's a feeling, you know? It, it really is. To hear younger kids and these kids DM me like, man, I look up to you. I want to be just like you. And I'm like, man, that's I'm trying to be better. But thank you. You know, they don't know, but they look up to us the same way I was looking up to the Diana Taurasi, the Katie Smiths, the Candace, you know, Parkers they're doing the same thing with us. So it's like, I got to set a good example, you know? Wow. So I'm not going to be on social media, you know, using profanity, posting crazy stuff, or even if I'm out, you know, you never know who's watching. Wow. Mm -hmm. and now we got phones and social media and people record everything. Yeah. So I always try to present myself the best way possible. And I'm far from perfect, but I try to live a certain way every day so that I can set an example for the, the next generation or even my friends, you know, and they set good examples for me. You know, it's good to have the right people around you. I can't have somebody around me as my best friend and they, they're just lazy. They don't want to do anything mm. or they just stuck in whatever situation they're in. You know, I need people around me that's uplifting, that works hard, that's you know, motivating. I'm motivating them. They're motivating me. I support them. They support me because it makes that much better. You know, I get at an early age. See, I yeah. didn't know the five closest people to you would ultimately determine who you become. Yeah. So it does. I had five bums around me, Liz. And look, <laughs> and you turned out great. And you turned out great. <laughs> yeah, I had to fight through it though. <laughs> yeah, Lude, he was that baby when you said the infant's falling down. He was the one crying. That was the one crying. I'm reaching up. I don't want to get up. <laughs> I don't want to get up. <laughs> All right, Lude. Man, it was good having you on here. We really appreciate you. And, uh, much respect and love to you and be safe out there, okay? Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I'll definitely stay in touch with you guys. All right. Yeah. All right. God bless you, Lene. All right. All right. You guys have a good night. All right. All right. Bye bye. And another good one, dude. Yeah, that was a great one. You know, and I, and I, we, 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 we want females to come on. We definitely oh, want them. Man, I enjoyed just, that. I enjoyed it, that. It's just hard to get the females to come on. I mean, you know. <sighs> That whole humility, though, was amazing. Uh, yeah, man. That, that, that's a testament of her mom, though, and her family, man, and her upbringing of, of how they raised her. You know, it's she's humble. Uh, she understands, you know, what's at stake. She goes hard at it. She doesn't quit. You know, it's, it's a lot of things that I was getting from her when she was talking to us, man. And I think that's a big testament to her, her family, man, her upbringing. You know, and um, you don't get that that much, man. Not, not at that young age, at least. And, you know, like she said, uh, the majority of like a, a lot of her friends, they didn't have that support system. And she saw how it affected them. You know, I've seen kids at the game and their parents not there and they be down on themselves. You know, we we become our kids biggest fans, man. Yeah. You know, and, and it's important that we support all kids. And, you know, she's just uh, just the perfect example of what can happen when you grow up in the right support system. Yeah. She's I, done nothing but win. And I think we gonna we gonna talk we gonna we gonna team up with her on that uh back to school thing, man. Definitely we gonna Absolutely. whatever she needs to, you know, try to raise the help. I think we need to be a part of that because uh, you know, it's giving back to for one, and we are Chicago. We we are from Chicago. So definitely gonna uh be a part of that and help her out as much as we can on that. Absolutely, man. Uh, as far as, yeah, like registering that name, just go to Illinois, man, the Illinois Department of Revenue, man, and ask for the paper, send the, download the paperwork, man, that service mark. It's, it's, it's really easy, man. So, you know, it's just a little information that she probably could use to be able to help get through that process. Because I, what is she, about 22, 23? 23. Yeah. 23, yeah. yeah. That's young, man. So, Shout out to Lene Harper, man. Four-time city champion, one-time state champ, three-time right. world champ with the USA women's basketball team, four years division one ball, went to the league. Come on. <laughs> Give it up to on All Ball Chicago, baby. I'm right-handed. No, I'm left-handed. I'm right. No, I'm left-handed. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, she, she figured it out, man. Like, wow at a young age that I want to shoot with my left. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm not making them with my right hand. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, so, yes, man, sir. 
Big shout out to a man, Bob. I really appreciate you, brother. Yes, uh, sir, man. Who we got tomorrow, though? Uh, man, are we your man. Get, yeah, Jeremy Richmond, man. We 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 got to get him on. He definitely said he's gonna tune in, and he definitely said he's gonna come on. So we got him. We, we got, got him to tomorrow. We got him tomorrow, man. Jeremy uh, Richmond, let's go. Out of Waukegan, man, and uh, kid was doing like a lot of spectacular things, man, and. And I, I really wanted to talk to him because, uh, you know, people didn't, people never hear the side, they side of the story, the player side of the story. They always read stuff in the paper and all this stuff. So I just want him to get on and talk about, you know, his upbringing, his life, and what he's up to now, man. So make sure you tune in tomorrow, uh, six o'clock again. We're gonna yep. do it six o'clock uh, Central Time, seven, you know, on the East Coast. So all about Chicago, man. Know it and make sure y'all swing over there and um, subscribe to the All Ball page on Facebook and subscribe to the YouTube page as well. And go over to Believe Podcast Network and listen to all 35, 36, 37, 38 shows we got over there, man. We got a gang of them, man. Yeah. Dorothy Gators, EC Hill, we didn't have some representatives. Yeah, TC. Yes, indeed. So, man, that was a good one, Liv, man. But what you finna be on, big fella? Man, it's time for me to unlace the shoes, man. Yes, indeed, man. What, no, no George Mike and drill? <laughs> hey, no man. Too, though, baby. Yeah, hey, hey, I, I saw them post that video of you, boy, when you went downstate, boy. You went berserk on them dudes, man. I was like, Liv, you dropped 40? Man, Rob, I, I, I hate losing, man. So I was going to do whatever it took. <laughs> to win that game, man. If I had to score, try to go score 80, I was going for it, you know, but, but no, the, 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 the East St. Louis team was just, they was just better than us that day, you know, but any other day, I think we would have got them, you know, it was, and back then, Rob, you got to think about it. Downstate, you playing so many games, mm-hmm. you know, in one day. Right. You know, so people don't, it ain't like that no more. I don't think they play all No, you only get one game a day. I think yeah, one. see, see right. it was tough, man, so. So and I I I think in the four game well I don't know I think I may still have a record 140 some points man and so it was it was hard man but I hate losing man I hate losing that was that Chicago mentality man when you go down state man you like man these boys can't play with us what you talking about <laughs> all right man we gotta go. Yes, make, indeed. We out here on Ball Chicago. Your boy Bobby Reed. I'm about to hear the legend, the NBA veteran, the McDonald's All American. Your boy Marcus Liberty. Peace. We out of here. One love. Be safe out there, people. Yes, sir. All right.